Hello everyone, I'm Undead, joined by Walker Dre. Hello, I'm Walker Dre. And Theo went to do zero. Hello, I'm Theo. And I, I think a topic we should talk about today is something that's happening a lot more for PC gamers than it is for console gamers. But it's still a really big effect that we're having. It's uh, it's it's clone games. Uh, let, I want to say something like... Walker, give me an example. It's, uh, like something that's like a copy of a mainstream game. The millions of Minecraft clones? Mm -hmm. Which one? Oh, the the millions. Yeah. Well, um... Uh, uh, if... I, uh, I'm pretty sure we all watch Did You Know Gaming, which is a very popular gaming thing for... It's just facts and all that. Well, um, they, I think uh, they just released a video on Five Nights at Freddy's, where someone made a Five Nights at Freddy's clone. It's not even a clone. It's literally just a bunch of random things put together yeah, with Five Nights at Freddy's glued onto it. It literally has copy and pasted the same description of Five Nights at Freddy's on... This was on mobile, and mobile has a big, um has actually had a really big impact on cloning because the app store is so easy for um, for literally anyone to just like post up a game and people like it. So the mobile community has so many clones, people generally don't take mobile gaming as a serious thing. Actually, if you look at mobile gaming, there's a lot of good games out there, but a lot of them are clones because people and, just um, want to get publicity. And um, John Tron, which is another, you know, game reviewer, or movie reviewer, Went over this. It's um, there are a bunch of Pokemon clones. It, it uh, in one of the discs, one of the cartridges for the SNES, it came with four games. There was Pika Dance, Pika Stack, and something else. And then it just said Pac-Man. And then it, it was just a clone. It it, it it it's the same thing with plug and play games where they take the old box, the little the little thing. Put a bunch of games inside of it. Ooh, sorry. And they just, it, it's a piece of shit. It, it, it's, it's causing an inflation, actually. It's causing a really big inflation. It's making the market a lot harder because now it's causing licensing issues. It's actually really bad for a lot of uh, game designers and game companies because someone will buy their game. Like, someone will think, hey, this, I remember Pac Man was. I remember some say this Pac-Man game was kind of cool, so they went to buy a game and they couldn't remember the exact title. So it was one that fit the description, and it's a completely different game made by a completely different person. And they take that game as serious, and now the game company has to take lawsuits or has to put out lawsuit for copyright. And there's mm -hmm. actually no, there's actually no like, as much as you think, there's like, there's not a reassuring chance that they'll win the lawsuit they might but they actually oh, yeah. might not i think there was a that makes I think it was a, yeah um, it was in like 2000 the tetris company which was actually found about the man who originally developed tetris um, and i think the late 2000s like in the late 2000s developed something called the tetris company which shut down all the legal copies of the game tetris walker uh, i remember you watched the video on that Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. And um, it's sad to see like that because, in all honesty, you have a low. You have, it was a low budget game. He didn't even receive credit for the game. I think until fifteen years until after the game was made. It, it it just goes to show you how much disrespect game developers get because people just copy their work. I want to say it's clone. Easy to copy. Too, well, clones are generally a bad thing. That doesn't mean they're horrible. Game modding and cloning has actually led to a bunch of cool new games that people enjoy now Daisy. and are real. The There's a clone on my mobile phone that I used to play, a Minecraft clone, and it was really well done. The developer even stated, like, I got my inspiration from Minecraft and I loved RPGs, so I made this game. And... Mojang hasn't had any problems with it because it they think it's a really slow a low a really um small game and it is but it's really fun and it deserves spotlight even though it's a clone 
So I wouldn't I'll necessarily say, say cloning is a bad thing, but it's definitely not good, especially for the game devs. Now I'll tell you this, and I, I do, I, I go, I, I love modded games. I play Fallout New Vegas modded. I played Skyrim modded. I play game. I play any game I can think of modding. I play modded, and I've been looking on the Nexus for mods lately, which I use primarily. I don't use the Steam Workshop because it's kind of you know plucky to me. And one thing I found was is that I was looking over some stuff. The Wakefield. I know you used to watch this YouTuber. He called he um I'll chest for He covered a um he covered a mod called Wasteland Defense. Where you went in, you used caps, and you bought buildings, and you yeah, bought stuff. Yeah, it was basically stuff. Horde mode, but instead in, uh, Fallout, and yeah, you can and, make your own little can... town and whatnot. And I mean, look what happened. Bethesda gave it so much credit that, hey, it's actually in the game now. Another thing is, is that in the beginning of Fallout New Vegas, there was one of the ink blots that said, like, it, it looked like two bears high-fiving. A modder actually said he went in, make, made a mod, and actually made an entire thing around like an effect. And so, like, it would be a two bears high fiving in the text. And the game developers noticed that. And in the Honest Hearts, there's actually a there's actually a tribal name, two bears high fiving. It just goes to show you, the developer notices the mods. They notice it. So I just cloning. Say mods. this real quick be a negative as well um for some games in particular like for anyone who's ever played battlefield there was one level and i do believe battlefield 19 is something forget at the moment sorry but uh but they actually had a mod that was a map that was so popular that the guys that they got the guys who made it to come in and help them in with the real game but before the game was done they booted them out took their work for it and then those creators then went on to make their own games and have actually made their own no standalone company at the moment but like that can either work out bad for the modders as well so i'll tell you this and um this is a mod i've talked about a lot for skyrim and I, I don't think you guys remember this it's called foul scholar and um it's it's a long mod it was made by one guy in the deck which is initially used for fallout modding which i have on my computer um, he used the resources and codes from the GEC to make a Skyrim mod of Falstar. One of the one of the devs at Bungie actually loved it so much they hired him right before they sold the rights to Halo. It, it, so in honesty, you never know how far you can go with modding. Oh, and speaking of mods, um, to anyone who doesn't know this, PlayStation and Microsoft actually have confirmed. There is a possibility that a mod Nexus will be on the network soon. So Xbox Live and PlayStation Network will have a modding Nexus. So games like Minecraft, solo player games like Minecraft will actually have like, you know, downloadable mods that you can put on. It'll have the central effect where only one person needs to download the mod for everyone to play on it on that world. Oh. Um, I, I want to move on to a different topic here that I'm pretty sure I know we all want to talk about. New games and their effect on the market right now. I'll let Walker start us off because I know Walker can go in depth with this one. Actually, I completely forgot about this topic. Um, there are a few games <laughs> that to be are... to perfectly honest about it. There are a few games that are hurting the, the stock market right now. Or, not the stock market, I don't know what the hell. Um, yeah, mm-hmm, stock. Um, game stock market. But the, um, there are a bunch of... I completely forgot what I was about to say. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put it like this. Games are getting a bit more expensive than they should be, but it's understandable, given about how much it costs to, d to develop them. But some games Nowadays, um, are just I'm under really but are under budgeted. And some people like, and this is really saddening because these are these are bigger um, development teams, like ones that have actually worked on games. They make a small budget game, and they sell for sixty bucks. There's like no advertising or anything in it. There's like no the game itself sucks, and no one knows about it. And it's sixty bucks, so no one buys it. And they get all angry that no one bought their game. Like what what do they expect? 
Of course no one's gonna buy your game. You, no one knew what it was, and anyone who did gave it a bad review. What'd you expect? I'll tell you this. Uh, I bashed this game a lot. I, I have no reason to bash it. I, well, I actually do have a little reason to bash it, and so to steal. It's called, uh, it, it, I'm pretty sure you all know what this is. It's called Destiny. Not in 2009, it was literally leaked. Was it, it was in an easter egg walker, I know you played ODST, which is said to be the worst Halo game there is. I didn't have a problem with ODST. And then again, it's only 20 bucks out right I now, so... Yeah. And, um, it, it, it's, it, in one of the levels in the city, it shows a planet with the tower ring above it saying Destiny awaits. It, it was, it, it was hype. No one knew about it until, like, 2012. And then it, 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 it seemed so cool. But everything they showed us in the trailer wouldn't be carried over into the overall game, which was first of all the one place you mess up in developing the game. Um, Halo 2 and um, the original uh, E3 demo for Halo 2 did the same exact thing. They the only thing that was carried over were was the Master Chief. That was the only thing that was carried over. The thing about Destiny is... outside the game boundaries. The thing about Destiny is they had a small budget for a game that they knew had to be good. So, small to make the game... Small budget for Destiny? Okay, not no, a budget, but they had a small time limit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I meant time. A small time limit? I was about to say they had a time But anyway, they had a they large had budget, but a large budget, but a small time <laughs> to make a good game. What people don't understand is that it takes days years months to make an amazing game gta 5 took probably over three years in total which is probably what more people was but and the thing I, about I, it I, is they had like they probably didn't even have a year to fully create uh destiny and people bashed it of course so they had to make a really expensive game for it so they could try to scrounge up what else they could do by making dlcs and, and stuff back. By making DLCs and making the game good and making it worth the sixty bucks that it's actually costs, so it makes sense. And I'll, I'll give Destiny you. that. And I'll tell you this: I'm not saying this because I'm an addict, because I'm a fanboy. This is the one reason I'll tell you this. And I know anyone here can back me up. If anyone here has seen the E3 presentation for Fallout 4, Todd Howard has literally said, and I quote: "If I'm looking this up right now." We've been working on this game since the second Fallout 3 was released. Fallout New Vegas, developed by Obsidian, was also another was also another working title that we, you know, wanted to work on. So I, I understand all the hype that was coming from Fallout New Vegas, thinking, oh, that's Fallout 4? That's awesome. But no, I mean, they've been holding on to this game since 2009 and if you've seen the trailer you've seen the gameplay it looks amazing there's no way to compare to it there's no way to compare but you just kind of have to think about well they're making this game it's they're making it for us the player and we're bashing it we're being ungrateful fucks i'm not saying everyone's like that because, in all honesty, games used to be around, what, $20 on the PlayStation 2? Now they're $60, and I only, I only see that price going up, because game budgets are getting more and more, you know, getting bigger and bigger. Exactly. And so the games themselves are going to be bigger and bigger, and so the prices are going to be more expensive. That's actually something that's really terrifying about the newer next-gen consoles. We don't know how good they're gonna be, but they're gonna be stated to be in the most high-tech things out there, and people will take that and run, take that ball and run with it. People will say, like, okay, I believe them. There's really not a reason for me not to. And as long as it looks better, people will take that. And that just terrifies me, because then we'll have $80 games that should only be, that should only be worth 50 And this, no look, one will buy these um, consoles because of how expensive it is. And that could and destroy the game. Say, that could destroy the gaming community if we're not careful. And I know you two. I, I I've fallen victim to this, but I know at least Dio's fallen more victim to this than I have. Pre-ordering games and exclusive content 
is the cheatiest, most douchebaggery thing you can do. You're going out of your way to, you know, develop this extra content. Then it's just, you're, you're developing this extra content. You're wasting more of your time than you're saying, oh, hey, you can become any race on any alliance if you buy this. What it means is they, the end So you're saying pay to win. Is yeah, really it, it feels yeah, not really now. it's not really, no, 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 but I see what he's talking about. Go. A lot of games yeah, now, no, because... especially multiplayer games, which is like eighty percent of games now, are multiplayer yeah, and they so. have pay and they have pay to win. This game in particular that we're playing right now, Planet Side Two, has something called Battle Cash, because in this game credits can take a long time to get. So to get your guns and to get your armor and to get your special things, you can buy Battle Cash to speed it up. And you can buy the most ultimate guns if you just buy battle cash. And look, uh, I'm saying this, I love the Elder Scrolls, it's one of my favorite series. It's rivaling Fallout. The Elder Scrolls is actually rivaling Fallout for me. And when Theo told me about ESO, when it was confirmed, I was so happy. When I saw, like, everything, okay, if I pre-order the Imperial Edition, which will cost me 20-something more bucks, plus the five it'll take to pre-order, I get a horse, and I get the Imperial Race, and I get a bunch of other stuff. The income of a game being pre-ordered, let's take... Oh, uh, I don't know, let's take something like Call of Duty. And I know a lot of people say Call of Duty is for five-year-olds. And I'd say no, it's for kids who have no skill in the FPS genre. If you play Call of Duty and you're actually good at it, good for you. You actually have skill. But in all honesty, it's still something you have to think about. Honestly, and the argument with Call of Duty is invalid at this point. If you saw, it's... there are actually tournament, tournaments for eSports. Is it eSports? Yeah, eSports. That really give you ch uh, loads and loads of money. Just uh, like any normal like thing for League or something. And, and um... the people playing that aren't like five-year-old children being lucky. It's real gamers, and if you look at them, they're actually strategizing playing. So if you argue that Call of Duty is for little kids or something, your might your point might be valid validated it to you, and you might have had experience with it. But that doesn't mean that it's true for everyone else. Yeah, it's not. It's it all just depends on the time. Mm hmm. I get used to it. It really depends, but Still, yeah. It's true. But not as much anymore. Your because... argument may be justified, but it may not be right, so... Yeah. And I'm gonna go, and back to what I was saying, though. It's so sad to see this, is that... The income of, you know, game developers getting pre-order cash... Is that... They they have a certain percentage. I'd say maybe a total of... Maybe... 29% of the entire game's income comes from pre-ordering. And that 29%, depending on how well the game does, Call of Duty, I think the franchise right now is worth as much as Microsoft is, which is pathetic. <laughs> and what I'm seeing that is that they can they can say, okay, new Call of Duty game, this is gonna be the most innovative, innovative Stabilized. and most open world gaming experience of a Call of Duty game, which means you can go anywhere in this map, you can get to any point on this map, you can fly vehicles in this map. You'll buy it, and here's the thing. Once you have that pre in, once they have that large stockpile of cash from pre-orders, they're gonna half-ass the game. They're gonna half-ass it. So, I'm not saying they it's the game's fault. They already got their money, fault. so they're not gonna work as hard. Uh, um, exactly. They have nothing to work for. They have nothing to work for. They have no reason. And the thing is, is that it's game. It's the gamer and the game developer that's causing this influx of shitty games. I'm not saying it's directly anybody's fault, but if people can stop, you know, and think about what they're doing to this economy and the game Shield market, that help because if you stop pre-ordering games. Pre-ordering is just a money grab at this point. All you guys want to add anything to that? Uh, if I can put an example, if I can put an if I can put an example, um, 
Theo, you had a problem with this. ESO, you were able to pre-order about a year ago, and it was just able to be, it was just able to be played on console literally two months, literally a month or two ago. And that yeah. really sucked. At least, at least we finally got the game. But that's, but I'm saying like, game developers really shouldn't ever let you pre-order a game months in advance. Like, there's a Ratchet and Clank game that's being pre ordered that you can pre-order right now. That comes out next year in June. Why would you pre-order that so early? There's actually a better chance that you're gonna forget the game even existed before you, before the game actually releases, even after you pre-ordered it. Yeah. So in all honesty, you just shouldn't. You just shouldn't do it. And just get surprised. All honestly, you just shouldn't do it unless. Find me out, and you're gonna be like, wait, I bought that. I'll I'll honestly, like you really just shouldn't pre-order it at least until you're like a two month at, at least two months away from the game releasing. That's like, I'll tell you this, just yeah. Like, how long did we wait for ESO again? Like a week? Three years. Yeah. No, like until when we pre-ordered it. Yeah, I pre-ordered like a month waited, like a month beforehand. I, I, I waited like I I, did, I maybe not even it like the day I I pre like maybe a week. I pre-ordered it on, I think, sometime in May, yeah, late yeah. May, and then it was like two weeks before the game came out, so I think... I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered it like two, three weeks before the game came out. Yeah, I remember you were telling me about that. And um, I actually want to go into a story about what happened when we pre-ordered a game. Um, This was back on PlayStation 3 before we started with YouTube and anything like that. Theo, so me, and a few other guys were talking, and... Hey, I think this is around the time that Dead Island Riptide came out. You and I were playing on, I think, Dead Like, I think it was on Dead Island. And we were doing a little, kind of, just messing around, doing the whole drug run thing, where we'd get a truck, go get the propane, just bring it everywhere. What does that have anything to do with pre-ordering? I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. No, I'll tell you that. No, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. And Theo and I were talking, and then Chris, a, fr a dead friend of ours, came in he's like, oh hey guys, they, they literally just confirmed Dead Island Riptide. I'm like, yeah dude, it's been like that for like a week. He starts freaking out about it, and then it cancels. And then Chris is like so broken down that me and Theo just can't help but laugh our ass at all. He's looking at us like, you fuck. Yeah, he, he was looking at us like, you fucks. What the fuck are you laughing at? Like, dude, dude, dude. The point is though, like, the, the whole thing I'm getting at here is that they over, people overhype games. Five Nights at Freddy's has been an overhyped game. The funny thing was, uh, Dead Island Riptide actually wasn't, uh, ended up, did eventually end up coming out, and it just wasn't that good. So even then, <laughs> Chris would have been happy I that you guys know. were wrong, but he still would have been pissed that the game sucked. That's what I heard, at least. I heard the there was terrible, there was terrible loading time, there was strong. terrible connection things, and the game was even shorter than normal Dead Island, with, like, even less run, even more rundown story. Like that's what I heard at least. Yeah. I never played it myself. All and they actually had to get, pick up me going was new weapons and um, they're actually um, new enemies. They've they've actually been killed. developing Dead Island 2. At least I'm pretty sure they're still trying to develop it. They've been on that for like at least two years, and there has there hasn't been much word about it. Yeah. And like it, it's another thing with Just Cause 3, which I know a lot of you guys out there, you're not if you're like. A lot of people watching this probably don't know what I'm talking about. Just Cause. Just Everyone, Cause. Dude, a lot of people know Just Cause 3. And, and yeah, it's just, or yeah, Just Cause I mean, 2 at least. Yeah. I don't know why, um, but it's I a, can't it's hear about anyone a, say Just Cause, and I always think Bulletstorm for some reason. It, it's about I, a, it's I about actually a, didn't know Bulletstorm for a while. I'm most likely thinking he's Hispanic. He's Hispanic, and he's, um, he's, a, he's a soldier. He's a mercenary soldier. And the third game is just now being released, I think, in a couple months. 